सर हम लाइव हैं अभी मैं इसको टेलीग्राम पे डाल देता हूँ फिर उसके बाद स्टार्ट कर देता हूँ ओके गुड आफ्टरनून एवरी वन टूडे वी हैव स्पीकर डॉक्टर राजेश सिंह एज अवर टूडे जी स्पीकर डॉक्टर मनोरमा त्रिपाठी इज नॉट फीलिंग वेल सो डॉक्टर राजेश सिंह इज टेकिंग दिस लेक्चर डॉक्टर राजेश सिंह इज ए गोल्ड मेडलिस्ट फ्रॉम बनारस हिंदू यूनिवर्सिटी बनारस हैज सर्व वेरियस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इन डिफरेंट प्रोफेशनल कैपेसिटीज ही हैज सर्व इंडियन स्कूल ऑफ माइंस धनबाद एम जे पी रुहेलखंड यूनिवर्सिटी बरेली and dr rml uh, ram manohar lohia abad university faizabad before moving to university of delhi his area of interest and specialization include information literacy and competency uh, competency uh, uh, resources online information retrieval techniques meta fettered searching academic uh, academic integrity citation analysis databases and research matrices including impact factor and h index etc he has delivered invited lectures and keynote addresses in various national and international seminars conferences workshop orientation courses refresher course and other faculty development program he has authored two book and published widely in the reputed national and international journals seminars and conference welcome sir and over to you rajesh singh sir thank you ashish thank you very much uh good evening friends uh my apologies at the very outset uh, uh, since uh, the first is uh, first is speaker itself uh she has uh, she is not feeling well and uh, she is not in a position to speak so that is why uh, i'm uh, shifting my lecture uh, which is scheduled uh, later on uh, at this moment and i i i believe that you will enjoy this lecture now i take you to uh, the powerpoint presentation so uh, this lecture is online information retrieval tools and techniques friends uh i believe that uh, uh, some of you might be an expert uh, in this area and some of you might be novice but believe me uh, the things or uh, the tools and techniques which i am going to uh, discuss with you will uh, definitely help each of you to learn how to find precise and relevant information particularly using different search engines whether uh, it is an individual search engine or a search engine associated with any of the databases it could be a single window search platform as well these uh, uh, tools uh, and techniques are uh, definitely very helpful uh, for uh, retrieving uh, the information which is uh, looked after by a researcher uh, when i am talking about uh, uh, the information retrieval uh, two important aspects are related to this Uh, i relate to this uh, i relate this lecture to the morning uh, inaugural session where i said that information need and information access are two important aspect of digital information uh, which is available to us today in plenty right when i talk about information in uh, information need i simply mean uh, that uh, the seeker of information should be uh, in a position to determine what exactly he or she is looking for and he so he or she should be able to articulate the same information requirement in a precise and relevant way to the search engine where he or she is looking for the information uh then information access is there uh this simply means that uh, you should be able uh to understand what are the places what are different sources where you should look for a particular piece of information and the most important uh, of all these is how to formulate a search query i believe uh, uh, all of us are using uh, on regular basis we are using 
uh, search engines uh, like Google, right? And uh, we look for a term or we look for a query, we find a lot of information which is not relevant. So why it is so? It is so because our approach to the information searching is uh, not relevant, it is not precise. The fault is more with the seeker of information rather than the search engine. So formulation of search query uh, helps you to find a precise and relevant information. This is the scenario today. There is no dearth of information, rather uh, we are overloaded with information. You look for any search engine, not, not Google, you go for a search engine which is associated with any of the important databases like Science Direct, Wiley, Sage, any database. You look for something and you get so much of information, so much of information then that, that makes you uh, confused again what to leave and what to read, right? So uh, this is the today's uh, information scenario, the digital information scenario where we all are overloaded with the information which is available, digitally available. But the fact is this digital information which is available through a platform called internet or web is very important for teaching, learning and research. What is required is uh, a kind of expertise, a kind of skill to find out precise and relevant information. We should know how to uh, talk to the search engine. See, for example, when you visit a particular library for a piece of information, uh, you use uh, 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 the OPAC or web OPAC, or simply if you move to the uh, stack area of the library, you find all piece of information arranged in the form of books. So we proceed logically. The same logic is required in online environment also with some expertise uh, to use the features which is already available with each of the search engine, right? So uh, uh, the information is uh, available in plenty and part of that information is highly important. Part of the information is not uh, uh, relevant and not authentic, but the part of information is highly important. Part of that information is not available, uh, uh, a good part of that information is not available in print also. So there is no way out. We need to uh, understand how to make a, a precise and relevant search. So this uh, uh, part of information which is available uh, through net, on internet or on the website, it is very important, which is digital information in teaching, learning and, uh, and research. And we need to effectively communicate with uh, uh, the search engines to find out precise and relevant information. Well, before we uh, proceed further, we need to have a kind of understanding what kind of information is actually available on the web, right? What categories of information are there and how we can uh, uh, find them out. So uh, for the convenience of access of information, I have uh, divide them, uh, divided them uh, in three groups, in three categories. The first category is free and visible uh, web or the information which is freely available and the information which is visible. Now, the question is visible to whom? The information which is visible to the search engines, right? Now, let me tell you that uh, uh, the largest search engines like uh, Google, they are uh, having visibility of only 20% of information which is available on the web. A rest 80% of the information is called invisible web. Now, what is this visible and invisible web? See, uh, a search engine or uh, particularly an individual search engine, they have got three components. The first component is, uh, uh, it is called spiders or worms or robots. So it is a kind of technology or it is a kind of program which keeps on uh, uh, visiting and revisiting different websites, different web pages, 
and whatever uh, websites web pages are visited by the spiders uh, it performs a task it takes an image of each and every web page it visits and revisits after a some time wherever it is allowed so that image is stored in the second component of the search engine that is called index or database so the largest the database of a search engine you are likely to have the largest results on a particular query right so what we have we have the largest database of a search engine called google and for a particular query you are likely to have the largest number of results compared to other search engines having a, a, a smaller databases or smaller indexes the third component of the search engine is the soft, uh, search software through which uh, we look for a query we uh, put our query for search so that a uh, search window is the third component of a search engine so what is visible visible web the visible web is that part of uh, web which is indexed by the search engine individual search engines like google the second category of information which is available on the web on the internet is free but invisible web so that is that part of the web which is not indexed by uh, the individual search engines like google yahoo tema all the web.com etc why it is not visible because uh, in some cases the spiders are not so efficient in some cases the spiders are not allowed to visit right so that path uh, uh, is called free but invisible web which is not indexed by uh the journal by the journal search engines which is which is not uh, in uh, in the in their data in their database right and the third uh, uh component uh, the third category is the paid information the paid databases which are accessible through web like uh, science direct web of uh, web of science scopus wiley sage cambridge university press oxford university press emerald group of publications so all these a uh, uh, commercial publishers they don't allow the search engines to index their uh, proprietary item and make it searchable so uh, since i have already explained you that that what is a search engine i would like to explain you what is a directory or subject directory or a subject portal see uh, with a purpose to uh, make the invisible information visible to the uh, academia there are various subject directories there are various subject portals which makes uh, the invisible information free and invisible information visible to you so what it is simply it is a listing of internet resources it is a listing of web resources or rather more precisely it is a human listing of web resources internet resources so uh, compared to the search engines see they are uh, uh, indexed by automated softwares automated spiders but in directories the information is uh, gathered by human being gleaned by human being evaluated by human being and then it is listed in uh, subject directories or subject portals so compared to search engines you will find lesser information in directories but the quality of information reliability of information authenticity of information is more which is available through such uh, uh, through subject uh, directories or subject gateways or subject portals right now the question is what is a search engine instead of uh, those three components what purpose it serves right so the answer uh, to this question is what is a search engine it is a tool what kind of tool see the search engines are simply a facilitator of information they are not the creator of information they are simply the facilitator of information and what kind of information they facilitate the information they are able to index not beyond that so that uh, 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 indexed information is only 20% of the web which is available right so the search engine is simply a tool what kind of tool 
like this. We have multiple tools uh, which we used in our daily lives and they serve different purposes, right? So what we find, we find uh, an example of a hammer. We use a hammer for a particular purpose. When you want to put a nail on the wall, you use the hammer. And what we have, what experience we have, if you are not properly uh, uh, able to use the hammer, you are likely to harm yourself. And the same is the case with search engine attitude. If you are not able to uh, operate uh, successfully, if you are not able to use the hammer or use the search engine successfully, you are likely to harm yourself. You are going to harm yourself, right? So we need to be very specific with a particular search engine. Uh, how we can be specific? Uh, the two advices for you is, number one, whenever you are going to use a, a individual search engine or any search engine for the first time, please read the help menu or help guide of that particular search engine, sparing a half an hour time or 45 minutes, 45 minutes. How it will help you? It will explain you what are the specific features, what are uh, the um, different uh, boxes uh, or different uh, search criteria which are available to search, to use, and to search in that uh, particular search engine, right? And the second one is, see, I believe that most of you might be using only the basic search. Basic search means where we have a single window to search. So my advice is, as a beginner of uh, uh, the information searcher, you should go to the advanced search. What you will have there, you will have different uh, windows, multiple windows, and where there you can put uh, your different uh, queries in different permutations and combinations. So that will help you to find precise and more relevant information. Uh, I will explain all these things. Uh, I will go live also and explain to you how uh, small uh, steps helps you to find more precise, more relevant information from any of the database. I, I, I can use a, a subscribe database uh, like Science Direct, and then we can find it out that how these uh, search uh, techniques are uh, useful to you. So uh, use the tool called search engine with precaution, understand the search engine, understand its features by reading uh, the search guide or uh, help menu, and then use the advanced search features which is available with that particular search engine. So what is a search engine? It is uh, the most often used tool. It helps us to find web pages and uh, uh, it has a mechanism of indexing uh, the information or the web pages uh, with the help of uh, sp sp spiders or crawlers. The advantage of the search engine is we can have good number of or large number of uh, results uh, from its database because it is uh, maintained, it is created and maintained by, uh, 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 it is uh, uh, created and maintained automatically with the help of spiders. The disadvantage of the search engine is uh, the quality of information which is, uh, uh, which is uh, available or which we find uh, as a result is always not good. It is always not accurate. So that information which is available through individual search engine needs to be evaluated in, in terms of its authenticity and reliability. See, the search engines are uh, the preferred tool when as a seeker of information, you are looking for something very specific like uh, a particular uh, website, uh, any, any uh, like uh, Indian Railway or University of Delhi or Jawaharlal Nehru University. Uh, when you are uh, looking, uh, when you are trying to pin down a quick facts or two, when you need to know if any information exists on a particular uh, subject or uh, subject area, and when you want 
mass uh, uh, quantity of information, uh, large information, comprehensive information, but you are not concerned with quality control. So in those cases, you can use the search engines. Uh, these are some of the examples of search engines like Google, Alta Vista, Lycos, Yahoo, Excite, and all the way dot com. Now coming to the subject directories, uh, it is a database of titles, citations, and websites organized by categories. So what you can have, you can have a, a subject directory or a subject portal where uh, uh, many of the subjects are listed, uh, as well as you can have a subject directory or a subject portal where only one specific subject is there and it's different uh, uh, sub-subjects or it's, it's different areas are uh, given there. So you can have uh, a subject directory where multiple subjects are there or a subject directory which is devoted particularly for a particular subject. The advantage of the subject directory is uh, it is maintained and edited and maintained by the human being. So the information which is available is carefully evaluated and annotated. So the quality of information is very high, which is available from subject directory. But the disadvantage is you always have lesser number of results uh, from subject directories compared to the search engines. <coughs> See, the subject directories are well organized and they are selective. They don't provide whatever is available. They provide whatever is uh, whatever is found suitable for a particular category, right? So in a, uh, in a subject like economics, you will have marketing, you will have uh, economic, uh, economic uh, uh, you will have planning, uh, you will have labor. So different sub-subjects of the subject will be listed. And under each subject, you will find further uh, uh, categories of information which are available. Uh, the subject directories are useful to you when you uh, want to know about uh, broad bit subjects like uh, general topics, popular topics, uh, targeted directories, current events, and uh, information regarding some products. The examples of subject directories are there. Bubble Information Services, InfoMine, Intuit, MathGuide, this is only for mathematics. Pinake is a subject launch pad. It's a bibliography of subject directories. And uh, you have almost all the subjects or uh, uh, directories of uh, different subjects listed on Pinake's list. So one single site, Pinake's, and you have access to uh, about more than 20 subject directories there. Socio site is for social work. WWW virtual library uh, is uh, for um, uh, more than, uh, means it consists of many subjects, and then Yanja is there. Now coming to uh, meta search or federated search engines. See, we have a different kind of search engine also. This search engine, uh, they don't have uh, the spiders, they don't have their own database or own index, uh, like uh, individual search engines. What they have, they have uh, their search software uh, with a special algorithm to send your query, to broadcast your query to different individual search engines and find information from them and then put it together uh, after removing the duplication or uh, keeping the duplication uh, search engine wise. In simple terms, meta search engines, they are single window search and they help you to find information from different individual search engines in a single go, right? Similar to that, there is a concept called federated search engine. This federated search engine uh, is uh, specifically used uh, for searching uh, the commercial databases. So uh, in case uh, your university or your institution is subscribing to uh, a good number of database, and a researcher or a user of information is required to go one by one uh, to uh, most of the databases for searching information. If you provide or if you make a provision 
or if you have a provision for a federated search engine in a single window, you can select, you can uh, search all the databases or you can select the databases which you want to search for a particular query. So meta search engine or federated search engines, they in simple terms, they are single window searches and helps you to find information from different databases, right? Uh, the advantage of uh, um, meta search engine or federated search engine is uh, you don't have to go to many search engines, many individual search engines. You can uh, go to a particular search engine and find out a uh, single window and you can find out information from there. Sorry. The disadvantage of uh, meta search engine or federated search engines are they are not so fine tuned to find precise and relevant information which is available in individual search engines uh, for open access resources or the individual search engines which are associated with different uh, databases like ScienceDirect and Wiley and Sage, right? Uh, that simply means, see, if you are using the advanced search features of Science Direct, you are able to create a permutation and combination of your search queries in a precise way. But the same query has to be executed in a different way in Sage or Sage Online Collection. But if you are using a federated search engine, uh, you will have different uh, uh, set of permutations and combinations. Although the federated search engines or meta search engines they do take care of all these uh, uh, varieties of uh, advanced search engines, but there are some limitations. So uh, this is only a limitation of finding very precise information uh, from uh, different search engines through single window search engines like meta search engines and federated search engines. The examples of uh, meta search engines are Bicup, Clusty, Mama, and it's quick. Now, coming to the information retrieval strategy. I, I have already told you that, uh, okay, somebody, wait. I have already told you that, uh, as a seeker of information, we are associated with two aspects of information. The first aspect is information need. We should be in a position, we should be skillful, we should have, we should develop the expertise to determine what exactly we are looking for and articulate the information need to a particular system of searching, right? And the second aspect is information access. We must have a knowledge. What are the places and what are the sources and how to formulate a search query in a precise way to find out precise and relevant information. So the first step uh, in this connection is state what you want to find. This is very simple. What you can do, you can write on a piece of paper what exactly you are looking for. For example, I have given here three examples uh, uh, for three searches. The first example is economic development in India. The second example is cognitive architecture of the depressed. And the third example is globalization and its impact on the Indian working class. They are, these are three examples for three searches. So the second step is identify the keywords. See. Whatever, uh, whatever you are looking for, everything is not searchable. So here we can find. Uh, in second example, the keywords are, uh, second and third example, the keywords are underlined. Uh, like cognitive architect, uh, architecture and depressed. They are, these are two keywords in the second example. In the third example, the keywords are globalization and Indian working class. Now. Uh, some of you may also say that impact should be one of the keywords. Fine, it should be. But 
uh, if we analyze the information requirement, if we analyze the process of searching or the availability of information or the fields of information, we will find that the term impact in many cases is implied. And in many cases, if, you, if we use the term impact, we won't be able to retrieve that those particular uh, those, uh, uh, research papers or documents. Why for? Because, see, we have a research paper and it, 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 it has in its title, the title is, title of the research paper is Globalization and Indian Working Class. It has not used the term impact. So if we are looking for globalization, impact, and Indian working class in the field called title, we won't be able to retrieve that paper. Whereas that paper, which deals with globalization and Indian working class, will definitely discuss what is the impact or effect of globalization on Indian working class. So many of the terms, they have an implied meaning and they are not required to be searched, right? Now, coming to uh, the first example, economic development in India. The keywords are economic development and India. Now, the third step to determine your information need to define your information need is to find out what are the synonymous terms which could have been used by different scholars and find out variant word forms like singulars and plurals and a difference, uh, difference of spellings. So in case of economic development in India, if we look for uh, the synonymous terms, for economic development, we have uh, uh, terms uh, like economic growth and economic progress. They are synonymous uh, in meaning to the term economic development. What if, for a while, let us consider what if we are not looking for the synonymous terms. If we are not bothered about the synonymous terms, what synonymous terms are available there? So what will happen? If we look for economic development and India, we will leave all the research papers where the author has used the term economic growth or economic progress because the search engine will look for economic development. As a human being, we have a human mind. We can understand that development, growth, and progress is almost synonymous in meaning. But the search system or the search engines, they won't be able to uh, understand this difference, right? So we need to find out the synonymous terms to look for everything which is available, to look for uh, uh, the research, uh, to look for the research papers or research documents where some synonymous terms have been used by different scholars, right? So select the synonyms and variant word forms very carefully. Variant word forms refers to uh, uh, the singulars and plurals, as well as uh, 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 variations in spellings. Like uh, we have two spellings for color, C-O-L-O-R, C-O-L-O-U-R. So we need to be very specific uh, when we are articulating our information need with a particular search system. Now, what to do? What we have, we have uh, four uh, keywords in this case, in this example, we have four keywords, economic development, economic growth, economic progress, and India. Now, are we required to search them in four different searches? No, we are not required to search them in different searches. We are required to search them uh, in one search by combining them with the Boolean operators, right? So what we need to do, we need to combine the synonyms, the keywords and variant word forms by using the Boolean operators. Now, what are those operators? The Boolean operators, they are and or not. And these three terms, 
they play very important role in information searching right they are very important they create a meaning to your keywords different meanings are created by uh, these words when they are used now what what are those meanings see when we apply the term not with any of the keyword we simply indicate to the search engine that we are not interested in that term and it should not appear in our search results for example if you are looking for pets p e t s pets but you are not interested in cats what you can do you can look uh, you can make a search pets not cats uh friends always remember that these boolean operators they are always used in capital letters to indicate to the search engine that they are boolean operators and they uh, uh give a meaning to the term where they are associated right so we always use the boolean operators in capital letters so the meaning of not is that term is not required in the results we are interested in pets i am interested in pets but not interested in cats right now the two uh, boolean operators are left and or one will uh, broaden your search results it will increase the number of results and one will decrease the number of results so which one will increase and which one which one will decrease see and that simply means this and this means if you are looking for uh, multiple keywords you can use and or with different permutations and combinations i have already uh, explained it to you say for example uh, i am interested in uh, information regarding admissions right so i am willing to take admissions either in uh, uh, delhi university du or in jawaharlal nehru university jnu so i am searching for information and i am saying to the search engine that admissions in du and jnu it has a meaning admissions in du and jnu it has a meaning what meaning i am looking for all the uh, information where admissions are discussed in du and jnu both du and jnu but when i say admissions in du or jnu that simply means i am looking for information which is uh, there in du or which which is related to jnu so that means when i say or i am giving an option so in case of and only those research or, or only those documents will be retrieved where both the term du and jnu are there uh, are there but in case when we are when we are using uh, the term or uh, all those papers where both du and jnu is available will be retrieved and all those papers where either the term du or the term jnu is available that will be retrieved i believe that uh, it uh, it is clear to all of you in simple uh, uh, terms and means both the terms or means either of the terms so when we go for either of the terms the number of results will be large it broadens the search query when we say and it limits the search query to a particular context admissions in du and jnu that means it is limited to du and jnu both where both the terms related to uh, 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 admissions are there that will be retrieved right give a context that makes your search more precise and more relevant the context is very important now what kind of context and what purpose is solved by the context in the first example which is from sciences we find uh, that a researcher is looking for uh, the term genetic mutation now the question is when somebody is looking for genetic mutation what could be the context so to my understanding genetic mutation can take place in human animal and plants and a researcher is likely to be interested in either of them 
very rarely a researcher will be a researcher will be interested in genetic mutation of all the entities humans animals and plants so uh, when the seeker of information the researcher says i am looking for genetic mutation which is only confined to a context called either human or plants or animals what he will do he or she will do they uh, uh, shuffle out the rest of the uh, criteria so i am if if, if i am looking for genetic mutation in humans i am not searching the information which is related to animals and plant because it is not relevant to that particular query my uh, information need is only limited to genetic mutation in humans not i i do not require information on genetic mutation which is related to animals or plants right similarly uh, the second example uh, is uh, on foreign direct investment somebody is uh, looking for information on fdi foreign direct investment right now the, there are uh, uh, means as a seeker of information we need to uh, give a context right and that context in this example is fdi in which geographical location in which country because fdi is a, a global phenomenon it is in almost all the countries of the world so a researcher or a user of information is likely to be interested in any one country so for example if i say fdi foreign direct investment and my information requirement is related to a particular country called india so the first context i can use is foreign direct investment and india so what i will do i am searching information on fdi which with a particular context to india so all the information on fdi which is related to other countries that will be filtered out that won't be part of my search result right and furthermore what i can do see fdi is not something a new concept uh, uh i think uh, it is um, a decades old concept right and my requirement my information requirement could be of some particular year so if i am looking for fdi in a particular context called india i might be interested in some uh, latest research papers on fdi so what i can do i can say fdi and india in a period uh, say uh, 2018 to 2020 or i could be more precise by saying only 2020 because i have already seen uh, the research papers uh, of different periods so i can give a context in the form of a geographical location in the form of period of research publication in particular case of fdi so giving the context uh, makes your query more precise and then once your query is precise you are likely to have more precise and more relevant information to a particular query now the sixth step is very important check your spelling proper spacing and proper punctuation friends be sure that a misspelled word a misspelled keyword will lead you to those research papers where same spelling mistake has taken place otherwise sorry there is no result so please make sure that you are searching a correct spelling you have uh, uh, kept proper spacing in different words in different terms and whatever punctuation marks if you are using in a particular search uh, 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 is proper appropriate now coming to the second aspect of information access we have certain techniques that really helps you to find uh, 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 information uh, very precisely so the first uh, uh, search technique uh, is phrase search you can make a search a phrase search now what is a phrase search 
a free search in simple terms is a search where you are looking for the keywords in the same order, different keywords in the same order as it is, right? So if you are searching for genetic mutation, there are two terms. You want genetic mutation to come together in the same order, right? Where we can use a phrase search. We, we should uh, use phrase search in case of proper nouns. If you are looking for a name of individuals, name of uh, associations, name of departments, you should use the phrase search. Now, let me give you an example. Why, why we should go for phrase search? See, uh, you are searching for a term called Hariban Rai Bachchan. Okay? So the expect, uh, expected uh, results are, you will find a lot of information on Harivan Rai Bachchan, his poetry, uh, his biographies, uh, some uh, criticism or some uh, explanations on uh, Harivan Rai Bachchan. But you will have some information which is related to Amitabh Bachchan, Aswarya Bachchan, Jaya Bachchan, Abhishek Bachchan. Why? Because the term Bachchan is common in all the names. If you are looking for William Shakespeare, you will have good number of results on William Shakespeare, but definitely you will also have some results on William Wordsworth. The point is the term William is common, whereas the interest, the information requirement is for either Haribans Sarai Bachchan or William Shakespeare, not other Bachchans or William Wordsworth. Uh, let me give you an example of uh, uh, some departments. See, if you are looking for a uh, department of justice, you search the term department of justice in Google, what you will find, you will find large number of results where department of justice is together as a fridge. But you will also have some information whether, where only either the term department is there or the term justice is there. That is not required by you. You are not looking for that. You are looking for department of justice. You are looking for Haribhan Rai Bachchan, you are not looking for Abhishek Bachchan. You are looking for William Shakespeare, you are not looking for William Wordsworth. So in all those cases, we can use the phrase search. Now, how to make a search a phrase search? See, if when you are using the advanced search uh, page of a search engine, you will have windows where you can put the query. Even in Google, if you go to the Google advanced, you will have a window where, where you can put the query and you can make your search a phrase search. But in basic search also, in a single window search, a uh, single search query box, you can put double inverted commas before and after your search query and make your query a phrase, right? That is uh, across the search engines, that is an accepted norm to, if you are putting a, a double inverted comma, uh, uh, before an after your query, that makes your search, that terms your search as a phrase search, right? So phrase search will help you to find out information for all your queries, uh, 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 all, all the terms of your queries in the same order as a phrase. See, in many cases, we can also use uh, phrase search even if it is not a proper noun. For example, uh, 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 let me uh, use the same example which we have given for the context. Uh, you can use the phrase search uh, for terms like genetic mutation. If you're not using the phrase search, what will happen? You will have the information where the term genetics has come somewhere and mutation has come somewhere. You will have information on genetic mutation as a phrase, but uh, there will be many results where either the term genetics has come or the term mutation has come or at the beginning, uh, the term mutation has come and then the term genetics has come. So even in some cases, you can use the phrase search to find all the words of your query in the same order. Now coming to the second uh, search option that is called field search. See, field search, uh, gives you an option to find uh, the information in a particular field. Now, what is that field? That field is the field of information. And the field of information are the title, the author, 
the subject, the keywords, the abstract, right? And, and th there are various other uh, fields of information, but these are very important field of information for seeker of information, right? So you might be interested to find out a particular uh, uh, keyword in a particular field. For example, uh, uh, I'm looking for Shakespeare, but I'm interested uh, in the term Shakespeare as an author. I want to read some sonnets written by Shakespeare or some dramas written by Shakespeare. So what should I do? I'm searching the term Shakespeare as an author. What I'm doing? I'm filtering all the information which is uh, associated with the term Shakespeare, but which has come in different fields. When I'm looking for Shakespeare as an author, I'm not interested in the term Shakespeare wherever it is in the title, wherever it is in uh, uh, the subject, because my interest is there only in the term Shakespeare as an author, right? So I can uh, limit my search to a particular field. Now, practically, and this is this uh, facility is available on the advanced search page of almost all the search engines. You can look for information in a particular field. For relevance of search, this field search is very important. Let me use the same example, genetic mutation. I have hundreds and thousands of results which is um, like a library. I'm, I'm, I'm on the gate of library because I have hundreds and thousands of results. I need particular piece of information, particular uh, 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 research paper published by a particular uh, uh, scholar in a particular journal. I don't want the entire library, right? So what I can do, I can find out very relevant information, very precise information on genetic mutation with human, with the context of human. If I am searching the term genetic mutation in the title, whatever results are there, they are more precise, more relevant to my query than in the papers where the term genetic mutation has come in abstract or in keywords or anywhere in the complete text. So what I can do, I can decide the field of my information which I'm looking for. That field could be the title, <coughs> the author, uh, the subject, the abstract, the keywords, any, anything, right? So that is called field search. <coughs> the third option of which we have already discussed is Boolean operators and or not. They, they are uh, magical words. They are called magical words for uh, searching of information or information retrieval. See, as an information professional or as a librarian, uh, uh, it is our duty to provide you or to provide the uh, researchers or the academicians right information with speed and ease. So the information retrieval, the concept of information retrieval uh, is easy, speedy, and accurate information. That information retrieval is best, which provides access to the information in a precise and relevant way, and which is easy, speedy, and accurate. So Boolean operators, uh, uh, and or not, play very important role. I, I advise all of you, please, uh, you can try the magic of Boolean operators. Even in basic search, you can put different Boolean operators and try to understand what differences are made by them. <coughs> How the different operators uh, help you to find out different variety of information. Now coming to the fourth technique that is called proximity search. See, the, uh, the meaning of proximity is closeness or nearness. Uh, in some of the databases, uh, for uh, example, particularly the JS2, you can find different uh, keywords or different terms of your search query in close proximity to each other by different number of words. <coughs> <coughs> that could be uh, 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 by 10 words, by five words, by 20 words in one sentence, in one paragraph or in one page. That means 
uh, in some cases when uh, you find uh, that uh, the things are very difficult to find precise information uh, whatever you are retrieving uh, that is not relevant or uh, even partially not relevant in those cases you can use proximity search and you can find all the terms which you are looking for uh, in close proximity to each other on the basis of proximity decided by you right you it is you who will decide that what should be the proximity of the different terms which you are searching for now coming to uh, the next one is control vocabulary see uh, in natural languages uh, the scholars the researchers and scholars they are habitual of referring uh, to the same concept in different ways for example when i say uh, history of india or indian history i am referring to the same uh, same concept in different ways but for information retrieval if we refer to the same concept in different way that is speed and accuracy is challenge so what we do as an information professional what we do we use control vocabulary we use some artificial language to make the things uh, easily searchable to make the things easily retrievable right so what we do we say the book deals with history and then history of which geographical location then the name of the country so whatever is the title history of india or indian history or a textbook of uh, indian history or a textbook of history of india whatever is the title irrespective of the title you will find all the books on history on a country called india in that control book i will read history dash india or history dash name of the geographical location so this use of control vocabulary is for helping the seeker of information to find out so whenever you are searching or a uh, 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 subscribe database whenever you are using a search engine of a subscribe database you are likely to have suggested searching control vocabulary so when you have a, a suggestion from uh, the search engine please look for that they refer to the control vocabulary used by the database so this information will help you whenever you are having some suggestions from the search engine that if you are looking for this please look for this you simply understand that this is the use of control vocabulary for the same concept right now the last one is concept map see this facility uh, of looking for the information is available in very selected uh, databases for example uh, credo reference uh, that is a uh, database uh, which is a collection of reference uh, documents like uh, dictionaries encyclopedias biographies almanacs directories so instead of uh, going to multiple dictionaries or uh, encyclopedia you can refer to this platform and once you have uh, uh, retrieved the results you can find out all the results in the single window that means if you have retrieved 5000 results you will find all 5000 results in the single window floating and connected to each other with a link how it helps you you can put your cursor in any of those terms and you can find out a very uh, you can will you will find out a brief information in a pop up window and if you are interested on the basis of that brief information if you are interested uh, to look for full text you can click from there and you can go to the full text so this uh, uh, i have already explained to you what is a phrase search field search <coughs> what are the boolean operators uh, uh, this is in uh, they are diagrammatic uh, representation of the different boolean operators okay now the question is uh you have uh, followed all those uh, 60 steps and uh, you have uh, used most of the techniques which we have discussed 
right now. Now, if you are able to find only 200 results, will you be able, will you be looking for or will you be reading the titles of those 200 uh, uh, research papers which you have found as a result? I'm sure we are not going to read, right? At somewhere in our mind, whenever we make a search, some information is there. And we are not able, or we, we, we rather, uh, we are not aware of how we should articulate with that. When you go to a library, you go for a book. And when you go in the stacks, you get the book, but you have some time. So what you do, you look for some other books also. And uh, all of a sudden, you find a book which is more relevant to your query instead of the book for which you have come. So that is, since you are uh, able to look the things physically, you can decide. In digital environment, you are not able to look to the things physically and uh, uh, there you are not able to decide. So what, what we need to do, we need to use our mind properly. See, once you have found 200 results, not only 200 results, you have found 20,000 results, then also you need to go further and you need to limit your, research, uh, limit your search or you need to refine your search, how you can. See, you should be able to properly go to one research paper or a group of five or 10 research papers in which you are interested in. So how you can? See, you have made a search on a query called genetic mutation you have found 500 uh, results with all those steps and all those techniques used. Now, the question is, you might, what you are interested in, further what you are interested in. So the possibilities are, you might be interested in a particular scholar, a particular author. And that is only you who can tell. So out of those 500 results, you can find out how many research papers are written by, authored by a particular scholar or a particular author. So what you can do, you can limit your search, you can refine your search with the name of that author or that scholar. You might be interested to read the research papers which are published in a particular journal. So what you can do, you can find out the title of the journal and you can limit your search, you can refine and limit your search to that particular journal. That, that facilities are there in almost all the subscribed databases. This facility in a different way is also available in Google. And uh, you might be interested only in recent research papers on a particular query. So you can limit and refine your search to the period of publication. And you might be interested because the, uh, the, the facility is there, you might be interested in types of documents. You might be interested in uh, review papers, in research papers, uh, in uh, editorial papers. You might be uh, uh, interested in book chapters. So depending upon your own requirement, you can further, once you have made a search, you find a good number of results, then also you can limit your search to a particular context, to, you can refine your search to a context or uh, uh, to the name of the authors, the publication titles, year of publications and type of documents. Further also, there are possibilities in some of the uh, databases that you may have some context. Like uh, if you are searching for a genetic mutation, you are likely to have a context of DNA. So you can limit your search further to a particular con context. So this is uh, uh, all from my side, and uh, let me let me take you live. Let me take you live to uh, uh, a particular database, and then uh, help you to identify how we can uh, make a particular search. So uh, kindly allow me uh, two minutes time uh, so that I can take you live to a particular database called science direct science direct 
sciencedirect.com. So let me uh, share this screen, friends. Here we are, and this is uh, the home page of Science Direct. Okay, so what I have suggested you, please go to the advanced search page. Uh, what was there in the basic search page, what we have, we have a single window for search. On advanced search page, we have multiple, multiple windows to make a search. So what I'm doing, I'm searching, simple search, what we are habitual of making. I'm searching for uh, the term genetic mutation, okay? And I have made a search. So what kind of results we have? I believe uh, all of you are able to uh, see this. Dr. Asis? Yes, sir. Uh, are you able to see Science Direct on yes. the screen? Okay. So uh, yes, sir. that simply means all the audience is uh, able to see this. See this. So what what results we have when we are searching for genetic mutation? We have six lakhs twenty three thousand eight hundred eighty one results. It simply indicates that you are on the gate of a library. This is not going to help you. So how to uh, proceed further? I am back on the advanced search page. I simply make it a phrase search. Okay, so this is a phrase search. And what number of results are there? From 6,23,000, I have come down to 47,094 results. Right? So, rest of the results, their genetic mutation was uh, not used together. So this is, this is the use of phrase search. Now, let me make one more search only. Let me make uh, this search in a particular field. So how to go for a particular field? I'm, I'm So all fields and here title abstract and author specified keywords. I'm making the same search in, uh, in, in uh, double inverted comma, genetic mutation and the com inverted comma. Okay, sorry, not here. It is to be in the title uh, because if we go for a uh, title and the uh, rest of the things. Uh, so I'm, I'm searching here in title. Genetic mutation. And I'm making a search. So what we have, we have uh, uh, the number of results which has come down to 305 only. But even though the number of results are uh, uh, 305, what we have, it is large and uh, I, I, don't, I do not expect um, any one of you that you will go and read the title of these 305 uh, research papers. So what we can do, see you can refine by the year of publication. If you want more, you can go for more. Right? So these are the year of publications. These are the types of documents, review research paper, review articles, research articles, book chapters, conference abstracts, and further, you can go for further. Uh, if you are interested in publication title, here are some of the examples. And further, you can find out the rest of the research uh, uh, journals. So if I'm only interested in a journal title called G, I can click and I have only the six research papers on genetic mutation in the title of the document, which are published in a journal called G, right? 
So this is the way, proper way of uh, searching information, uh, uh, retrieving the information from uh, the digital uh, information uh, in the digital information landscape, particularly from uh, the web, from different databases, from open uh, access resources. So this is all from my side uh, uh, as of now. And uh, if there is any query, Asis, can we uh, have the queries from uh, the audience? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I'm open for the queries. Uh, kindly uh, ask the audience. Yes, uh, I'll ask the question. Uh, Mr. Martha Prasad want to know, please explain hmm. federated search where it can be implemented. Uh, one of the participants, Mata Prasad, wants to know. Okay. So, Mata Prasad ji, uh, see, uh, I have already told you that federated search engines are implemented by different uh, uh, universities and institutions to provide a single window search to their scholar across the databases. For example, in Delhi University, uh, we have uh, we, we, we uh, provide access to hundreds of uh, uh, databases and we provide um, access through federated search engine uh, like uh, Nimbus, or uh, now we are going to have a federated search engine called Referee. Sir, rest one, uh, rest uh, our participants are writing very nice, knowledgeable and informative suggestion, very useful information, very deep explanation. So they are, uh, so thank you so much, sir, for uh, giving the wonderful talk and very knowledgeable information given to the participants. I hope participants will really benefit it from this. Once again, thank you so much for delivering this wonderful lecture. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.